you regain the majority in 2022 for the Republicans, and there's a very good chance of that happening, I'll come back to the individual races in a second, would the rule that you applied in 2016 to the Scalia vacancy apply in 2024 to any vacancy that occurred then? Well, I think in the middle of a presidential election, if you have a Senate of the opposite party of the president, you have to go back to the 1880s to find the last time a vacancy was filled. So I think it's highly unlikely. In fact, no, I don't think either party, if it controlled, if it were different from the president, would confirm a Supreme Court nominee in the middle of an election. That, uh, what was different in 2020 was we were of the same party as the Correct. president, yeah. and that's why we went ahead with it. I do think the issue that you raise is the single most consequential thing I've done in my time as, as Majority Leader of the Senate. Uh, preserve the Scalia vacancy or the Gorsuch uh, appointment. Uh, the Brett Kavanaugh appointment was certainly challenging and controversial, and of course we had very little time left when Justice Ginsburg passed away, and that took a good deal of priority and, uh, I think, skill to get Amy Coney Barrett through. Oh, nothing, just Mitch McConnell broadcasting once again that if he were to become the Senate Majority Leader, that he would once again block a Democratic president from confirming a Supreme Court nominee. But sure, bipartisanship. And so that we're clear, all of this is couched in a made-up rule. McConnell has unilaterally decided that even though a president has the right to nominate a Supreme Court justice, and even though the Senate has a constitutional obligation to advise and consent, that so long as a president and the Senate are of a different political party, that the Constitution somehow gets suspended. All because there is no limit that Mitch McConnell will go to to consolidate power for himself. And by the way, we already saw that shamelessness play out. In 2016, Obama nominated Merrick Garland to the bench, and that nomination languished for 293 days until expiring once Trump took office. Almost a year. All because supposedly, the people deserved a voice in determining who the Supreme Court justice would be, and McConnell couldn't possibly deprive them of that with an election coming up. Except, of course, in the case of Amy Coney Barrett, who was nominated by a Republican president who got rammed through the confirmation process in all of 30 days and was confirmed just a week before Election Day. And on top of that, 65 million Americans had already cast their ballots. But hey, the American people deserve a voice in who their next Supreme Court justice will be, or whatever. The simple fact is that Mitch McConnell is content to hide behind the purported intent of the founders, but what he's done and continues to do are wholly and completely antithetical to democracy. His sole priority is to entrench a system wherein the government only works for one party, a party that perpetually and solely represents a shrinking minority of Americans. Remember, the last time Senate Republicans represented a higher share of Americans than Senate Democrats was for two years in 1996, which in fact was the only time in the last three decades that that happened. And yet in the same time period, Senate Republicans have held a majority in the chamber nine out of those 16 cycles. The same goes for the presidency. Democrats have won the popular vote in seven of the last eight elections, and yet Republicans have won the presidency in three of those cycles. The GOP relies on inherently anti-democratic measures because without them, they wouldn't be a viable political party. And so knowing this, it makes it all the more ridiculous when both Republicans and even moderate Democrats crow about bipartisanship. You've basically got the top Republican in elected office broadcasting that he will cheat. He is ensuring that we know his intention is to rig the rules of the system for his own party's benefit. And yet at the same time, they've got the audacity to criticize Biden for not only and always seeking out bipartisan solutions, for not constantly kowtowing to Republicans and acquiescing to their every demand. I don't even have to suggest that if the tables were turned, Republicans wouldn't even pretend to care about bipartisanship because it already happened. When Republicans were in control, they rammed through every one of their agenda items with zero regard not only for what Democrats wanted, but what the American people more broadly wanted. And remember, what are Republicans' top priorities? Confirming judges and passing tax cuts for the wealthy. And how many votes did Senate Republicans need to confirm judges and pass tax cuts for the wealthy? Only a simple majority. They already nuked the filibuster on all of their priorities, and yet the filibuster remains intact for anything that Democrats need, including legislation to shore up our democracy while Republicans are busy suppressing votes in every state that they control. Those moderate Democrats like Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema should probably recognize that Republicans have already whittled away at their precious filibuster for the things they care about and preserved it for the instances where Democrats would benefit. 
They're not protecting anything except Republicans' unfair advantage. The fact is that the danger of allowing Republicans to once again control the Senate is blatantly obvious, and we have to do anything and everything in our power to ensure that it doesn't happen. I started the Don't Be a Mitch Fund to raise money for voter outreach and voter registration organizations in the eight states with the closest Senate races in 2022 to help as many people possible vote and to ensure that McConnell never again becomes Senate Majority Leader. If you plan on donating in 2022 anyway, this is where your money will have the biggest impact. You can find a link in the post description to this video or on my website website BrianTylerCohen.com, but what's clear is that if you want democracy to work, you can't reward a party intent on destroying it. To see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. And for a deeper dive, check out my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, where I discuss the week's top stories and interview major players in the world of politics, like Vice President Kamala Harris, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki, Elizabeth Warren, Chuck Schumer, Katie Porter, Pete Buttigieg, Nancy Pelosi, and many more. Again, that's No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, available anywhere you listen to podcasts.